PowerLink Limited furnishes the following information and requests you to prepare statement showing the requirement of working capital for the year 2016. Production capacity for the year is 20,000 units. Production is 90%. Cost structure is given to us. Okay, we've been given the cost structure here and then we've been given information. Now remember, in the calculation, okay, in the calculation for working capital requirement, okay, statement for work, working capital requirement, statement, okay, and I'm just going to use the words they've used upstairs. Okay, so we have statement showing working capital requirement, statement of working capital requirement for 2016. Now, uh, only those items are going to come inside here, okay, where we are able to allot time. Remember, our format is particulars, particulars, units, rate, okay, and when we say rate, we are saying rupees, rupees per unit, rupees per unit, okay, uh, and time. So unless there is time, we will not get an amount. The amount will end up being zero. So there's no use of putting any current asset or current liability, any current asset or current liability. Okay, now I'm going to leave a healthy amount of space and then start with current liabilities. Okay, so you won't put items here unless there is time. And the time, if you notice everywhere, it is months. Okay, so remember our total period, our total period is 12 months. Okay, that's going to help us in a formula. Anyway, uh, crude material remains in stock for a period of two months. So uh, this is a current asset. Okay, crude materials is a current asset. Other direct materials is a current asset. And because time is given, two months, one month, that's why I'm putting it in. Finished goods, two months, valued at direct cost. Follow your question. Okay. Normally, when we do this, we take it at total cost. These guys are saying to do it at direct cost. No problem, we'll do it at direct cost. The production process. Production process. What are they trying to call this? Okay, this is work in progress. WIP. Takes one month. WIP valuation to be followed, to be made as follows. Crude material plus direct material. Okay. At cost plus 50% of wages and variable overheads. Okay, so normally we use a formula for work in progress. All right, remember the formula for work in progress is normally raw materials as it is plus labor plus overheads upon two. What are they telling us to follow? They are saying, they are saying that work in progress must equal to, okay, crude material, crude material plus direct material plus direct material at cost. That's always the case. All right. So we have crude material plus direct material at cost plus 50% of wages and variable overheads. Wages and variable overheads. So we are going to follow these people's formula and solve. That's all. Okay. So we have time lag in the payment of wages is one month. So wages is one current liability year. Okay, and variable overheads, variable overheads is half a month. So another current liability here. Fixed overheads are paid quarterly in advance. Now, when you're paying an expense in advance, prepaid expense is a current asset. Okay, and when we are saying quarterly, remember, total period is 12 months. Quarter means one by four. So we are talking about three months. Crude material purchased from suppliers, 
against advance payment of two months. Okay, so this crude material, the crude material is against advance payment of two months. So what does that mean? It is going to be a current asset advance to suppliers. Other direct material suppliers allow credit of one month. So this is going to be current liability. Bank balance is a current asset. Okay, production and sales take place evenly throughout the year. This is obvious. It is always understood. Otherwise, you cannot do this entire calculation. This entire sum, this entire chapter is not possible without the assumption that this is there. So even if this is not given in the question, we are assuming this and solving. Credit allowed to customers are given as under 50% of invoice price against acceptance of bill for four months. So this becomes what we call a bills receivable. Okay, and bills receivable just like just like debtors is a current asset 25 percent of invoice price time lag two months okay so debtors two months debtors two months and bills receivable uh, we have for a period of four months now we have to factor that into a calculation downstairs anything else we need to worry about here we need to recalculate not recalculate but restate the cost sheet a little bit okay production capacity for the years 20 thousand units production is 90 percent so production production in terms of units you can think of a formula where we take capacity capacity into the production rate okay so we are going to take 20,000 into 90 percent and get ourselves 18,000 units, 18,000 units. Now, as far as the cost sheet is concerned, okay, I'm going to try and squeeze this in over here. All right, please bear with me. Okay, we have a simple particulars and amount. Keep in mind, all of this is working note. I'm using full form. In the exam, it'd be better if you use. I'm going to use short form. In the exam, it's better if you use full form. Anyway, uh, crude material crude material crude material okay no problem here we go crude material they are saying is 30 okay other direct material other direct material they are telling us is 20 then we have wages we have wages which is 25 we have variable overheads okay variable overheads and i'm going to purposely keep variable overheads and fixed overheads separately okay maybe it will help us do this better okay so i'm going to shift this downstairs okay here we go and continuing we have variable overheads to the tune of 15. now the question is what about fixed overheads if we know that the production is 18,000 per year annual production is 18,000, then monthly production okay and uh, we can say that monthly production, monthly production is equal to 18,000 upon 12. And that, and that amount, I think is going to be uh, probably 1,500, but I'm going to use the calculator and check. All right. Anytime you have a doubt, this is not a mental math competition use the calculator 1500 okay so monthly production is 1500 and these guys have said that the fixed overheads are 9000 per month so i can take this 9000 and divide it by 1500 units in a month why so that it will give me the per unit cost of fixed overhead so 9,000 upon 15, for those of you who are good in math, I think it is six, but I shall still check. Okay, 9,000 upon 15 is 600. Now, uh, we are talking about 1,500 units, so 9,000 upon 1,500, which is six. Okay, so uh, fixed overheads per unit is six. So I can now put fixed overheads over here like this. Okay, extending further, extending further, six. Why am I doing all of this? Because I need to find out total cost. Okay, so total cost is equal to the addition of all of these people. 
And again, it's very tempting to do it mentally, but you are not out there to impress anybody. It's an exam. Nobody's watching you. 30 plus 20 is 50 plus 25 plus 15 plus 6. Altogether, 96. All right. So we have 96. We do not know what the selling price is, but we know we know the profit. We know that the profit is 20% on sales. That means the sales is 100%. Okay, that means that the sales is 100. Therefore, 20 uh, is profit and subtracting backwards, we'll get 80% as a total cost. So, 80% corresponds to 96, 100 is X and now we cross multiply. Okay, so we are taking 96, we are taking 96 into 100 upon 80. Okay, and that gives us 120. And 120 is going to be a selling price. And the difference between these two on the calculator, please do it, you will get 24. Alright, so now I have the cost sheet, I have the cost sheet in place. I have my annual production in place. And I have been given a formula to work out work in progress okay so i've included the monthly production right below work in progress i'd like to show the substitution there instead so i'm going to just move this out of the way okay now uh, let's see where can we put it yeah this should do and right, remember your working note should be below your table okay all the space downstairs is for you okay or on another page the next page you can do all of this okay now our work in progress calculation they're saying is crude material plus direct material as it is so we have crude material we have crude material plus direct material as it is plus 50 percent 50 percent of wages which is 25 25 and variable overheads which is 15 which is 15 so we have 50 plus 50 percent 50 percent of 40 which is 50 plus 20 and therefore 70 i've got my rate for work in progress okay now comes the fun part we have identified all the current assets okay so remember crude material other direct material finished goods is a current asset okay work in progress is a current asset okay then uh, because we're paying in advance whenever you see the ex a a an expense paid in advance is always going to be a current asset okay so whenever you see advance expense any form of advance expense current asset okay Similarly, over here we have a current asset. So, how many current assets we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Lot of current assets. Looks like I have not left enough of space. So, no problem. Let's reach there and then we'll extend. Okay. So, I'm just going to go down the line first with our usual suspects. Remember, we start with stock off. Stock off. And we would normally call it raw material. But we have got two materials this time. Okay, we have got crude material and other direct material. And let me see carefully and see which one of these are current assets. Obviously, the material itself, irrespective of whether we are paying in advance or whether we are paying later, the material itself will always be a current asset. Okay, so crude material, other direct material, I'm putting down. Crude material and other direct material then what's next we have work in progress work in progress many of my videos i use short forms anyhow in the exam you have to use full forms okay work in progress then we have finished goods finished goods then who's next on our usual suspects list we have debtors Okay, and this time around, we know that apart from debtors, apart from debtors, we also have bills receivable. So, I'm going to put bills receivable. Bills 
receivable. Okay, now we have placed bills receivable, we have placed debtors. Our next usual suspect is cash. Again, I'm not following the same sequence and are they calling it cash? Okay, bank balance. Okay, so I have to call it bank. Now, I'm not following the same sequence in the question because these are the guys, apart from bills receivable, of course, that we normally put. Okay, we put raw material, work in progress, finished goods, debtors, okay, and bank. These guys most of the time are there, but I've modified it a bit. And now I'm going to go back upstairs and see who is left out. All right, so going further, before going further, I'm going to make space. Okay, so I'm going to take current liabilities and place it further down. Okay. In your exam, instead of me having to gauge like this, all you people have to do is count the number of current assets and current liabilities and leave those many lines accordingly. Okay, so you can structure your table nicely and neatly. Anyway, uh, I am done with crude material. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. Okay. Time lag in payment of wage is a current liability and variable overhead also current liability. Fixed overhead payable quarterly in advance and that is a current asset. So fixed overhead advance advance fixed okay or better than advance can we call it prepaid 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 fixed overhead okay now prepaid fixed overhead done then crude materials purchased from suppliers against advance payment of two months okay so advance to crude material suppliers okay advance to suppliers suppliers of crude materials then once we have that in place okay we have bank balance i've already looked after okay now keep in mind this guy's also done okay anything else Bills receivable also we have factored in, debtors we have factored in. I think we're done with the current assets. So we're going to have total, total current assets, which we are going to say is A. Then we have current liabilities and current liabilities one below the other. Let us see what all our items are. Okay, we have, okay, and I'm looking for the CLs which were marked. Okay, so we have variable overheads. Okay, but it's always good to start with creditors. So do we have creditors? Okay, other direct materials. Okay, creditors. Creditors. For other direct materials. Or if it doesn't fit on the same line, it's okay. Go down to the next line. Okay, creditors for the direct materials. And then who else do we have? We have, okay, uh, variable overheads. Okay, variable overheads. Anything else visible here? I don't see anything else. Okay, uh, wages. We have wages. We have creditors here. Okay, and we have variable overheads. So that's it. So outstanding wages and outstanding variable overheads outstanding wages and outstanding variable variable overheads and that's it so we're going to take total current liabilities
this sideways platform. Now, having done that, you need to keep in mind that your total current assets is A, total current liabilities is going to be B, and then we get average working capital requirement. Okay, requirement. which we can then write as a minus b. Now remember, you should be using a scale to draw the full table. I can do things like this and get away with it. You, on the other hand, may not be that lucky. So, always remember to use a scale. Now that the table is done, we need to calculate units. Okay, and remember, annual production, annual production is what we have calculated here. We got 18,000. Okay. But from this 18,000, we need to calculate units, which is based on monthly. And we've already done this in between, but I'm going to do it again. All right. So remember units, units is equal to annual production, annual production upon time, upon time. And we know that annual production is 18,000. We know that time is 12. Okay. And accordingly, when we do, we get 1500 units. Okay. So we have 1500 units, which we can then put across the board everywhere over here. Okay. So we have 1500, 1500, 1500, 1500. 1500 bank we directly have an amount to put directly all the way outside we will see it from upstairs okay so bank how much is bank balance 50,000 great okay I'm going to put that 50,000 now itself okay now itself outside over here 50,000 next prepaid fixed overhead same thing 50,000 sorry 15,000 1500 huh? be careful 1500 1500 and yeah we are done with everything on the current asset side now current liabilities creditors 1500 outstanding wages 1500 outstanding variable overheads 1500 okay so i'm done with units now i'm going to look at time crude material is two months direct material one month finish good two months okay so for time it is 2 okay be careful for time it is 2 1 2 okay crude material 2 other material 1 finished goods 2 okay so uh, we are done with these then work in progress they're saying is 1 okay work in progress they're saying is 1 and for fixed overheads we already discussed and said it's going to be 3 so work in progress is 1 and prepaid fixed overheads is going to be 3. Okay, so work in progress done. Okay, we are done with the 3 over here. Okay, bank also we have looked after. Then 50% of invoice price against acceptance of bill for 4 months. So we have got 4 months for bills receivable and 2 months for debtors. So debtors is 2 months and bills receivable is 4 months. But they've given us some other information as far as the, what we have over here. Okay, so they're saying credit allowed to customers is as under valued at selling price. Okay, so we need to remember that it's valued at selling price, which we have calculated as 120. 50% of invoice price against acceptance of four months, 25% over your two months. What about the remaining? That's probably cash. If we were doing cash budget, we would have to worry about it. Over here, okay, over here, the only place where we need to put this in is against units because 50% of whatever is being sold, 50%, okay, for bills receivable and 25% over here. So we cannot stick to 1500 units. 
Okay, so as far as debtors is concerned, as far as debtors is concerned, it is 25% and bills receivable it is 50%. So corresponding to debtors, it has to be multiplied by 25% and okay, corresponding to okay, so I'm going to maybe do it over here into 25%. Similarly, into 50% for debtors and bills receivable respectively. Now, anything else we need to keep in mind? We've been are we done with everybody's units? Yes. Time, we are yet to start current liabilities. So, current liabilities, who is our first time? Okay, wages is one month. Wages is one month. Variable overhead is half month. I'm going to go down. Corresponding to wages. Okay, corresponding to wages. And remember, I have to put it under time. So, wages is one and variable overhead is half. That's it. Now, going back upstairs, going back upstairs, we have one and half fixed overheads payable quarterly in advance. Okay, is already done in the current assets. Where else do we need to look at? Suppliers, suppliers for other direct materials is one month. Okay, remember crude material, advanced crude material. Advance to suppliers of crude materials. So we have to fill up and that number is two months. So two months here and one month there. So two months here and one month here. Okay, so we are done with everybody's time. Now we need to look at rate and for that we have made the cost sheet. Crude is 30, other direct materials is 20. Crude is 30 other direct materials is 20. Again, we have it here. Crude is 30 and other direct materials is 20. Okay, so we are done filling them up. Work in progress, we did the math. We did the math and we got 70 over here. Okay, so we are corresponding to work in progress. We are going to put 70. Then, finished goods. They have told us something for finished goods. We have to be very careful. All right, what have they said to us about finished goods? Finished goods to be valued at direct cost. Now, the thing about direct cost is it is equal to direct material plus direct labor plus direct expenses. The only direct material that we see here are these two items, crude material and other direct material. Direct labor is wages. There are no direct expenses. These two are overheads. So we only take these 30 plus 20 plus 75 plus 25. Sorry, and do it on the calculator. You'll get 75. Okay, so 75 is the rate we are going to take for finished goods. Why? Because they told us to do that's why end of story. And then we are supposed to value at sales price for credit allowed to customers, which consists of both bills receivable and debtors. Okay, so sales price we have calculated over here is 120. I'm going to put down 120 in both those places. Okay, so 120 over here, 120 over here. Okay, prepaid fixed overhead. Prepaid fixed overhead is going to be, okay, prepaid fixed overhead. We have a rate, which is six per unit. So we're going to stick with 6. All right, prepaid fixed overhead is 6. Then our current liabilities, creditors for other direct material. Okay, remember other direct material, the same, uh, you can say rate as above, we have already applied. Okay, outstanding wages, outstanding wages and outstanding variable overhead. So wages is how much? Wages is, wages is 25 and Outstanding variable overheads, 15, so 25, 25, and 15. With that, I am done putting together the data in the table. Our next step is very simple. We multiply units into rate, into time, in order to get amount. Okay, so 
uh, that means 1500 into 30 into 2. So 1500 into 30 is 45,000 into 2 is 90,000 and I shall not um, do this mentally. I'm going to use the calculator again to make sure I'm correct. Okay. And let's see, we have this and I'm starting with 1500 multiplied it by 30 multiplied it by 2. Okay. We get 90,000. Same way, 1500, 1500 into 20 should give you 30,000. But if you're unsure, use the calculator. Okay. 30,000. Okay. So 1500 into 20 into 1. Now 1500 into 70 into 1. So 1500 into 70. Okay. 105,000. 105,000 or 1 lakh 5,000. And now 1500 into 75 into 2. Again, to use, do not feel ashamed. Do not feel ashamed to use the calculator. You have a right to use the calculator. 1500 into 75 into 2. Into 2. Which gives us 2 lakh 25,000. Okay, so we have 2 lakh, 2 lakh 25,000. Then we have next one. 1500 remember into 25 percent into 25 percent into 25 percent into 120 into 2 which is 90,000 next we have 1500 1500 into 50 percent into 120 into 4 okay which is 3 lakh 60,000 and now adding all of these adding all of these numbers no oh, we have two more okay remember this is an abnormally long sum with lots of current assets so 1500 into 6 into 3 gives us 27,000 okay so over here 27,000 then 1500 into 30 into 2 1500 into 30 into 2 which is equal to 90,000 okay so I'm done calculating all the current assets okay so many different current assets and we need to add all of them up to get total current assets okay so we start Anyway, I have 90 on the calculator, so I'm going to go upwards, plus 27,000, plus 50,000, plus 360,000, plus 90,000, plus 225,000, plus 1,5,000, plus 30,000, plus 90,000. Okay, so we end up with 10,67,000. Our total current assets, 10,67,000. I hope I'm right. You all are also here to do the math. You can also check. If you feel this is off, mention it in the comment. It's just mathematics. 1500 into 20 is going to give us 30,000. Let's see our total current assets here. 1500 into 25. Okay, let me not risk it. 1500. 1500 into into 25 which is 37500 okay we have 37500 and then again 1500 into 15 into half 1500 into 50 into half 37500 37500 so our total current liabilities is going to be 37,500 plus 37,500 plus 30,000, which is 1,5,000. Okay, so we end up with 1,5,000. And then you take 10,67,000 and minus 1,5,000. So we have 10 lakh. Okay, we're minusing 1,5,000 from 10,67,000. Okay, which gives us 9,62,000. 9,62,000. Okay, and the total of the current assets is bugging me a little bit. So, I'm just going to do the math one more time to make sure that we are correct over there. 
for 10 lakh 67 thousand okay so i'm going to start from the beginning this time around we are talking about 90 thousand plus 30 thousand plus 1 lakh 5 thousand plus 2 lakh 25 thousand plus 90 thousand plus 3 lakh 60 thousand plus 50 okay and you have to be careful okay i'm going to do minus 5 okay plus 50 thousand plus 27 thousand plus 90 thousand 10 lakh 67 thousand yes our answer is done okay i hope you all have found this useful okay complete working capital management sum see how long it took okay why because first of all i'm explaining if you'll have to do this in the exam it should not take you more than half an hour to finish it and okay and if you're good you can finish it in even 20 minutes right so if you all have any doubts with what's happened till now feel free to message in the comments i'll be very happy to reply please like share and subscribe thank you